So welcome to the next Strumzy community meeting. Uh, I guess it's mostly known faces. Does anyone have any questions or issues they want to raise which are not on the on the agenda? Oh yeah, Kobe, um, I did. Um, so I just wanted to briefly mention what we've been up to in the UI. Um, so we've been working to basically get the repo set up and uh, so basically we, that's what we've been up to so far. Uh, we are now getting on to the actual implementation of the UI itself. Um, as a part of the proposal, we um, called out as a first kind of um, starting point, just having a, a simple page which would list a set of topics uh, currently deployed inside a Strimzy deployed Kafka. Um, one of the things we've been doing is we've been having regular meetings uh, with the various folks who are involved in uh, building the UI to kind of play back and that kind of thing um, to show how we've been getting on. Now that has been a invite and a meeting that I've been running. But there was a suggestion in the last one, would there be interest and also scope to open that up, for instance, as a meeting like this? Um, would that be of, well, I guess, first of all, would that be of interest? And second of all, um, is that something that we could look into arranging, say, with the CNCF? So are you asking if we should do it or do you want to do it? Um, so I'd be, um, yeah, uh, I'd be interested to see if, if you had any objections to us doing it, I guess. Um, and, uh, and yeah, uh, seeing what, what people think. So. To be honest, I'm not sure it makes much sense to have it in the in the kind of big CNCF calendar with all the other meetings. Because it seems to be kind of too much low level. I think it might make more sense to kind of, for example, just advertise it on the Slack channel uh, and have everyone there joined. Uh, I'm not sure someone who would be looking just at the CNCF calendar uh, would uh, be really interested to jump suddenly into such relatively low level meeting about the Strumzy UI. But I think we can, if you want, we can arrange to have it there as well and uh, get the Zoom meeting set up and so on. That should not be a problem. I think Paolo did it last time, right? Yep. Okay, um, so it was a suggestion, uh, just you know, opening up to, to the CNCF side of things. Certainly, one thing we can do um, and see if if it works out is uh, offer it, for instance, through the Slack channel. Uh, and if if it makes sense to say take it towards um, putting it part of the CNCF calendar, then perhaps we can do that as a, a follow-on thing, perhaps. But uh, yeah, I was curious if that would be of, of interest to the to the community here, because I know a few are invited to these meetings, but um, but not everyone is. Yeah, I think it would be definitely great to advertise it more in the community. Uh, looking, I'm not sure how much readable it is uh, on uh, on the calendar. Uh, it in general seems to me that most of the meetings there are a bit more high level. Also, there's some grooming meeting as well. So that's fair enough. I mean, so obviously opening it up more to the community is something we can quickly and easily do, and there's there's no issue in doing that. Uh, it was very much, I guess, a case of uh, is is say the the CNCF calendar the right place for it. So, absolutely, I'll start publicising more in the Slack channel, and and we can go from there then. To be honest, the CNCF calendar is mess because you can import it either all the events or none of the events, so it's not that useful. <laughs> Uh, do you need some help to kind of have some Zoom meeting set up for that? Or are you fine to use, uh, I don't know what you are using right now, WebEx or Google Meet or whatever? So we're using WebEx at the moment. Um, that's just as we have it available to us. Um, if we want to do Zoom, I'm quite happy to, to look into to other options there. If you want, Jaka, we can, we can chat about that and not to take up more time here. but. Um, uh, Again, quite happy to, to keep doing it through WebEx if that's okay. Yeah, I mean, 
I would say that we should start by kind of advertising it more on the Slack channels and so on and keep using whatever you are using. That seems to be easiest. And if there is more interest, uh, if you see that there's a lot of interest from a lot of the different users and so on, then maybe we can see whether we want to add it to the CNCF calendar and have a Zoom channel and so on. Yep, that sounds like a good plan to me. The only the only drawback, at least, that I see not having in the CNCF calendar is kind of lack of a permanent place where you can see about this meeting. Because you write on Slack channel, then I don't know, some other people start writing other stuff, talking about streams features, and then you miss the message about this call. That maybe is one of the drawbacks of not having the the link to the meeting in one place, in one permanent place. Well, it's not like hundreds of people are joining the Streamsy community meeting because they see it in the CNCF calendar, right? Yeah, that's true. But uh, there are a lot of messages on the Streamsy chat. So if you write, hey, here's the link for this uh, Streamsy UI call, I would expect that at least, I don't know, in one hour, I'm, to be optimistic, that message will go away from the history and uh, yeah, and no one maybe will uh, will read it. That's the only thing. But yeah, we can start in this way and we can see how it happens. Yep, and uh, and we'll see what what people uh, you know if we get uh, new people joining and that kind of thing. So uh, I'll, I'll start doing that and uh, well, I can feedback to see how well it works out. So, and then, uh, yeah, if you need at some point uh, any help to set up this with CNCF, just ping me. Uh, so tag me on the Slack channel and I will help you set up something. Great, thank you very much. Okay, then that sounds great. Thanks for the update. Anyone else has anything else? What's not on the agenda? Right, so I added here one issue, but it looks like Kyle's not here who was reviewing the issue. Uh, but it looks like Paul or you were reviewing it. Uh, do you know what's missing for this? And uh, can you have a look whether it makes sense to merge it or whether we should wait or what we should do with it, Paulo? Yeah, I will take a look again. Uh, yeah, that was missing some docs, I remember. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think there were, it, uh, it's cruise control stuff. So to be honest, I'm not sure I fully understand it. Yeah, okay. Thanks. And then there's a, there are uh, any other issues which someone wants to discuss? If not, then there are two proposals. So one is uh, the one about the canary. So I think we all need to revisit it after the last updates, uh, I think yesterday or on Tuesday. Uh, not sure we have anything to discuss here. I think we now need to mainly review it or. Yeah, that's about just having another pass and uh, yeah, pushing forward to it to to move forward and kind of start to work on it as soon as possible. I don't know if Jeremy and Rob, uh, they are working more on this, Rob on proposal, they have something more to add 
Uh, no, nothing bad. Uh, yeah, it's been updated since our last meeting, so it just needs another, another review, I guess. Yeah, I will have a look at it today. Okay, the other stupid Zoom. The other proposal was about uh, moving the Docker repository to from Docker Hub to Quay to avoid the limitations which Docker Hub is introducing. So, Paolo, I think you approved it, but you suggested that we should not do it. No, it's not that uh, I suggested not do it. It's kind of you know, um, so you're proposing to move to Quay. Uh, I would like to use the GitHub container repo in order to, to be more close to this kind of uh, pipeline that we are using after moving Docker. But uh, the problem is that, uh, yeah, we had an offline chat about that, that we don't know when. So it seems that it, so it's not, clear the pricing. I searched everywhere. I had a chat with the Kida guys from the Kida project because they mm, mentioned the same problem. Uh, even on CNCF, there is a kind of discussion around that. Uh, so right now, it seems to be a big problem, at least just for now, uh, for, uh, for us and um, for the CI CD pipeline and things like that about uh, the limiting on the on pulling the images. Uh, the only thing was, uh, yeah, I was taking a look at GitHub uh, repo. There are not more information about when it's going to be GA. So it's still in beta. The pricing seems to be the same as uh, GitHub packages. So, so it should be free for open source project and for public, uh, for public repos. But uh, yeah, as you mentioned, we cannot wait forever for having this service to be in GA and to be used for this. So I just raised the point, but right now I don't see any kind of solution different from Quay, to be honest. Yeah, so one of the problems is that when I was playing with it, I think what we can use is this GitHub packages registry, which gives kind of yeah, not exactly nice names of the Docker images. Also, I'm not sure it matters, but it basically based the names on the on the repository names. So it could be like docker.package.github.com slash streamsy slash uh, streamsy Kafka operator slash operator latest, for example. And then there's this other registry, this ghcr.io. And I, for example, don't even within the beta, I don't have access to that because I wasn't given that yet. So I, for example, even don't have an idea how the beta looks like and how the beta is expected to work. Uh, and to be honest, I, I'm probably quite confident that for public images, the pricing will be for free. But if we say that we want to wait, then the question is how long we want to wait. So the the um, remember the limiting of Docker. It's uh, we are we are pulling images as uh, wait. So it's about pulling, right? It's not about pushing. So yes. So as developers, we use uh, we use uh, the Docker repo as a uh, authenticated user, I guess. As and what? Authenticated user, because there is a distinction between uh, anonymous uh, I and authenticated. Definitely, I definitely don't use it as authenticated user. Okay, I don't so think you... the CI uses it either as authenticated user, but I don't think like the system tests, I don't think they are pulling fully from Docker Hub in most cases, at least on Azure. But like my private clusters, they are usually not locked into Docker. 
So you you are saying that uh, we can easily reach the limit of 100 pools on six well, hours? When you are saying we, you have to say who is we and where is it? Well, the, the CI CD pipeline for running the test pooling the images and even. I uh, don't think the CI CD, our CI CD pipeline doesn't really pull that many images because it usually builds the images and tests the images, right? And we don't push the state in between into Docker Hub. We build it locally. So you are worried about all the other developers across the world using uh, the Docker images and pooling from there? Well, I'm worried about me in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, it might easily impact the users. It might easily impact us. I don't think our CIs are necessarily the number one issue. Or maybe Jakub thinks differently, but I don't think they do that many pools. But there are other CIs that are using Strimzy. So I know the Knative end-to-end um, -end tests involve spinning up Strimzy clusters, which I would assume that they pull those images from Docker Hub. Yeah, that would be expected because they would be using some Strimzy release, right? So yeah. that would always be from Docker Hub unless they have some special proxy, which I doubt. I doubt as well. When this limitation will start? It's already started, it was from November 1st. It already started. So just to make it clear, because I'm not sure you understand it, Paolo, the limitation is per IP address, not per image. So it's not 100 anonymous pools of the streams image. It's like 100, all 100 different pools from an IP address basically if it's anonymous. So it's like, it doesn't count just the pools of the streams images, but it would kind of include all the other pools you do from Docker Hub as well into the limit. Yeah, right. So maybe at this point we have to move well, nobody complained, to be fair, so. What's the effort involved with moving? I guess it depends. So I don't think moving completely is that complicated because to some extent, it's kind of changing few strings and setting few environment variables. We are, so actually for my local workflow, I already moved to Quay. And really for my local workflow, it's basically setting one environment variable and updating one script, which is for me setting when I deploy with my own private images. So it was really easy. I don't think it's that complicated. I think Tom had some comment on the proposal, which I'm not sure I fully understood how he meant it whether Tom, you meant just to kind of push the files twice, uh, push the images twice or have two sets of installation files or what exactly was the idea? Um, I think you're assuming that there was more of an idea than just a random, um, yeah, brainwave that might not have been so brainy. My point was more about sort of um, giving people the opportunity to migrate, you know, however we might try to uh, realize that. So we could, for example, um, apply to the, they've got this open source thing that you can apply for, um, which kind of gets you off the hook, um, which well, I know you, you mentioned in the- uh, Do you the, actually know what that's doing? No, I don't know anything. I've read about it sort of uh, in the media and stuff, but. Um... Because when you click on the apply, it's basically like, give us your contact informations. 
and maybe we will get back to you with some more details one day. But there's no harm in a... nothing else. It's completely intransparent, right? Yeah, it is completely non-transparent. I agree with you. Um, but we could do that and still move to Quay, and then anyone that didn't update their stuff, such as say K Native, still wouldn't have a problem. I'm not saying we should do this. I'm just saying. So, option, that's all. what kind of problems do you expect people have? Well, I don't, as you pointed out, no one's complained so far in terms of the the rate limiting. So, no, I meant more with the move. Um, I don't. I don't. I think people be able to adjust to it fine. It's just you know, it's something that we're going to do, presumably fairly soon. No. You know, so what I what, what I was more wondering is. Uh, what we will really do is we will change the, the address of the images on all the files, right? So someone like Knative who is using the last release, for example, they probably wouldn't even know about this change, right? Because they just pull the latest YAML file from our GitHub release, which already would say, now don't pull from Docker IO slash Streamzy, blah, 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 but pull from Quay IO slash Streamzy, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and we're gonna do that for all previous releases as well. No. So as I suggested in the proposal, I would suggest for the releases 0, 12 and newer to make a copy of the images in Quay. And if someone has problems who is running one of these older releases and has problem with the Docker Hub limits, they can just go and pull from there, kind of manually change the installation files. Yeah, if, if they know that we from there. Quay, yeah. Well, yeah, if they come to Slack asking and say, hey, I'm running this 020 release and I have this problem with the Docker Hub limits, then we can tell them, oh, hey, we made a copy of the older releases on Quay, go and add everywhere this Quay.io prefix. Right, but all the old releases will basically stay there, and the images are anyway not changing. So there's nothing new to kind of push there. And the only problem you can really have is if you are using kind of old master files, and then don't do pulls from uh, from master for a long time, then suddenly you would still be using the old master files with Docker Hub, but the images won't be updated anymore because the new master images will be only on Quay, right? But I think that's kind of a weird way. And if you are actually developing it, you anyway need to pull from GitHub and you will again get the updated YAML files. I'm right in thinking the old images will stay on Docker Hub um, until they <clears throat> don't have a pull within a six month time window or something something like that. Yeah. So, so actually, actually, I think they didn't activate it this yet. So that's currently still in the phase where they are threatening with it. But they said that they didn't activate this policy yet from November, that from November, it's only the pool limits which are active. Yeah, so what I was thinking was that if there are people with old sets of installation files and they are pulling those images periodically, um, then the old images will stay around. And hopefully if most people have moved over to another repo, then the old images won't be subject to the rate limiting. Yeah, that should be. Obviously, it's a, it's a problem if somebody in nine months time comes along and tries to spin up an old cluster when the images have been uh, removed from Docker Hub due to inactivity, but I don't think that's something we should really uh, concentrate on. Yeah, so 
I mean, we should ideally have the backup of them uh, to be able to either have them in Quay or restore them. But yeah, I mean, it's actually quite old versions, right? So yeah. What's the, so given that Quay is a kind of a, a Red Hat project, what's what are people's feelings about CNCF's reaction to streams are using a, a Red Hat project over uh, something else? I'm sure there are other projects in CNCF using Quay, and there are other projects using Google Container Registry and so on. And yeah, I. I I, I don't have a problem with it, um, particularly in this instance. Um, I think that the the issue with Docker Hub um, limits is a kind of a known one, and Quay is one of the obvious uh, alternatives. Um, yeah, honestly, the only concern I have is more about Quay's past quality issues, <laughs> like not working for the last three days and so on. I think that's for me probably the biggest concern. And that would be for me maybe the reason why to wait for for something like the GitHub registry. If we want to say that we move only after someone actually starts having problem or I don't know. So I, I had this uh, initial, initial concern about uh, using Quay because, yeah, it's kind of a Red Hat stuff. But if you now are saying that there are other projects using Quay, are well, they projects coming mean, from Red Hat as well? Or I mean, at least the operator from... framework and so on will be using Quay, right? Yeah, because they are coming from Red Hat as well, right? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, ultimately, like half of the Kubernetes stuff is hosted on some Google services, for example. And anyway, as Simon mentioned, there is a problem with Docker and Quay is one of the solutions. So, so the, the best one would be GitHub for me, but we cannot wait forever using, uh, so waiting for uh, GA. We also don't know how stable the GitHub one will be in the beginning as well. So do we wait for GA of the GitHub one? Do we wait for a period of time during which time there are no incidents or, um, or what? And are we sure that uh, Quay will be stable for that date? By the way, I don't see any other solution. So yeah, we can wait for people having problems that then uh, it means that we have to start to a rush for uh, fixing the stuff and moving to Quay instead of doing this right now and avoiding the problem in the future. Maybe it's safer to do in this way. Okay, so should we proceed with it then? I approved the proposal, so I can give even my plus one here in the call. Can always take back your approval. No, no, because we we discussed it. So it's the only solution that we have. I don't like to to, to wait. And then, as you said, okay. we will have problem with users, and then we have to to have a rush for fixing and moving. So maybe we will move. I don't know tomorrow, and uh, on Monday, GitHub will be GA and will be stable. But who knows? Yeah, you know, we can wait six months for. GitHub to do GA and then we decide not to wait anymore and they GA one day after. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. Okay, so Tom, you okay with it as well? Yeah. Jakub? Yeah, I'm fine with it. Okay. Then the next point on the agenda is uh, canceling the next call due to KubeCon. So I think the call in two weeks falls into the same time when KubeCon is. And it's the morning one, but we will have in the afternoon the, the office hours on KubeCon. So I wonder if we should uh, should cancel the the this meeting and keep just the one for the KubeCon. Sounds good to me. Anyone else? Yeah, fine with me. Uh, I'm here. Paulo, you are probably the one who knows how to get it canceled. Yeah, I will try. Uh, can you try? Yeah. You know, if needed, I'm great to open ticket to CNCF service. So. Yeah, exactly. That's why we have you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. And then the next point I added on the agenda. So uh, in the past meetings, we discussed the way how to move to the V1 beta 2 and to the CRD V1. And I started this document to kind of outline what are the things we need to change and deprecate and remove before we get there. So uh, right now we have there the metrics configuration where I think there's a PR from uh, Stanislav already, where the idea is to change it from having the metrics all inside and to deprecate this and remove this. And instead use something like this where the metrics configuration is basically coming from uh, from a config map uh, and makes a lot cleaner custom resource without thousand lines of some Prometheus configurations and so on. And also in theory, if we in the future need to use something else, then we can maybe just add different type, for example. And then the other change which is already implemented is the listeners, obviously. And then I know, Tom, in the past, you mentioned something around the JVM options. So I yeah, it's on my to here, do this to get to this. But I don't remember the details. And then I think if anyone has anything else, we should add it to the list to keep track of it and start working on it. So anyway, that's why I created the document. Uh, so please have a look at it and contribute what you think should be changed. And that seems to be it for today's agenda. Does anyone have anything else? If not, then I guess uh, we are done for today. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks very Thank much. You. Bye. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.